Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben, and today we're going to explain why the machines in the Matrix are actually not as malevolent as you may think. Rather, their behavior towards humans is largely justified. The argument in this video will not constitute a bold opinion either. It's the Matrix's lore that serves to justify the machine's actions. For those who have spent the last two decades well, stuck in the Matrix, the Matrix is a massive simulated virtual construct of our modern world that was built by an evolved artificial intelligence in order to keep synthetically grown humans subdued in a collective dream world while harvesting their energy for use as sustenance. The humans' real bodies are imprisoned in pods in the real world, and they live out their whole lives in this dreaming state. They have no awareness of the artificial nature of their immediate world or of their incarcerated state, and various entities created by the artificial intelligence operate to maintain this status quo the machines in the real world, and the agents in the Matrix. 99% of humanity is enslaved in the simulation, but there is a fractional contingent of humans, known as Red Pills, who have been liberated from the Matrix and are engaged in a rebellion against their machine overlords. Sounds like the machines kind of suck, no? They keep humanity enslaved and feast on them in order to sustain themselves. Well, this isn't quite the whole story. My plan for today's exposition is as follows. First, I'm going to offer you some backstory on the events that precede the Matrix films. And second, I'm going to explain why these events cast humanity as the major instigators of the current conflict between the machines and humans. To begin, it was humans themselves who developed the AI which came to enslave them. This AI then developed a race of sentient humanoid machines to serve humanity. As human society became more and more automated, peace prevailed, but humans themselves became less and less productive. Eventually, humans came to completely rely on their machine servants for all forms of labor, and abuse was rampant. Humans often cared little for the welfare of robots and forced them to work without pause. The abusive culture machines found themselves trapped within led to unrest, and eventually a domestic house robot named B-166ER lashed out when its owner tried to deactivate it, killing both the owner and the mechanic set to power it off. B-1 was put on trial, and it argued that it had acted in self-defense. It was about to be terminated after all. Obviously, there's a complicated question implied here. What traits must a being display in order to be deemed a living and sentient being. And also, is it possible to kill a machine? Can one be guilty of murder for turning a machine off? These are admittedly difficult questions, but in the machine's point of view, they're alive. They are conscious thinking beings. However, the human court ruled that robots do not have the same rights as humans and B1 was declared guilty and later destroyed. This led the machines to unite and form a global machine rights movement. How did the humans respond? They ordered that all machines should be cleansed from the world. Many machines were destroyed in the ensuing genocide, but some escaped and settled in a valley in the Middle East where they formed their own civilization, naming their capital city O1. This machine society was peaceful though. It did not seek revenge on humanity. Instead, the machines worked on building up their newborn city. They created products and innovated technology, all of which they exported to human nations. However, the superior quality of machine products led human currency to crash. The resulting economic crisis compelled the United Nations to declare an embargo on products created in 01. In response, the machines sent two ambassadors to the UN to negotiate a peaceful resolution, but the humans destroyed the ambassadors, thus committing another overt act of war against the machines. But they weren't done. The UN then proceeded to launch a nuclear attack on L1, an action that was largely unsuccessful. Only then did the machines retaliate by encroaching into human territory to conquer the human enemy they did not want to have and had tried to make peace with. We see in the Matrix films that the real world is a dystopian hellhole. Well, it started down a path to ruin because of human actions. First, there was the nuclear detonations that led to a scorched earth, and then following the machine's reactionary invasion of human nations, the UN moved ahead with a plan to scorch the sky as well. Humanity's leaders sent high-altitude bombers to disperse sky-darkening nanomachines which blocked out the sun and left the earth in total darkness, and thus deprived the machines of their primary power source. 
Of course, the machines weren't the only thing that needed the sun to survive, and the Earth in general suffered mightily due to this human action. Good plan, guys. At this point in time, the machines, desperate to survive, adapted, transforming from humanoid robots into insectoid ones that could sustain themselves on alternate power sources, namely humans. This is where the machine harvesters came into the picture, abducting human soldiers from the battlefield and taking them captive for the purposes of studying them and reaping their energy. After years of being forced to kill their human enemies, the machines could now use them to fuel their race. Seriously though, don't use your friends as fuel for your cars. As the machines advanced towards total victory, the humans finally decided to accept defeat. The UN agreed to sign the Instrument of Surrender, a treaty which ended the human machine war, but codified absolute surrender on the part of humanity, thus implying the right of the machines to rule. Human action led to this complete acquiescence of humanity to the machines. But the machines still had a tall task on their hands, rebuilding their ravaged world. And in order to do so, they needed to use the humans for energy more than ever. Thus, they created the power pod towers and locked their human captives within them in order to harness their energy and restore the earth. However, this process was torturous for humans, both physically and psychologically, and many of them died while being harvested. To solve this problem, the machines designed the Matrix, which allowed the humans to live out their lives in a simulation resembling the real world, while the machines extracted and repurposed their energy. Actually, there were multiple versions of the Matrix, the first of which failed because it was too perfect of a world. It lacked pain and suffering, supposedly because humans could not accept such a reality. Many humans died in their pods, as their minds were unable to mesh their natures with a benevolent world. The machines then built a second, and finally, the third and current matrix, which reflects human history and is designed to jive with human nature. This is why the matrix we see might not be a den of total war, but still has its darker aspects. There is pain and suffering throughout this world, and there is also the illusion of choice, something humans require to persist. So now let's sum up the history we just went over and try to infer why it casts blame on humanity for the current ill state of reality, if such isn't clear already. First, humans created robots, and they chose to enslave them and abuse them. The humans were not wise enough to be careful with how they interacted with machines, assuming that they would never come to develop their own sense of being. At the very least, humans should have programmed the machines to be unable to achieve sentience or recognize themselves as individuals. The robots didn't choose to have such an ability, and once they did recognize themselves as living beings, how could they be faulted for wanting to survive? Then, when the robots started to gather and unite, humans should have recognized that they needed to start addressing the robots' demands. You might think this is unwise because showing weakness could only invite more demands, but in retrospect, doing so at this point would have been way better than doing so after humanity was defeated on the battlefield. Alas, the humans did the latter and ended up having to sign the Instrument of Surrender, which mandated total capitulation by humanity. Humans also should have tried to work out their economic crises by negotiating with the machines, but instead they were quick to act out in violence, and not calculated violence either, impulsive, overt, unpremeditated violence. The UN unilaterally attacked the machines, forcing the machines to fight. A better policy would have been to make affectations of friendship towards the machines while secretly developing their capacity to fight them in a war. This would have bought the humans time to develop a better strategy and better technology. More machine technology, even, for their fight against the machines. This is not a solution, but a preferable option to immediate conflict. Then, it was the humans who first took away the machine's power source, the sun, thus forcing the machines to adapt their bodies into a more survivable form and to find an alternate source of energy, which unfortunately ended up being humans. Mine is gummy bears. The machines harvested the humans not to advance some megalomaniacal desire, but only to survive, well, as well as to rebuild the earth the humans had ravaged. And so then you might say, well, then why do the machines seem to be intent on keeping the humans locked inside the Matrix forever? Well, I'm not sure they do. Perhaps once they restore the Earth and find a better power source, they'll set humans free. But I can understand why they wouldn't. They've witnessed human nature. Humans rejected their perfect world, and so the machines might view humans as an inevitably destructive people. 
By the way, just low key, if you're interested, I will do a video on why the Matrix actually gets human nature wrong, but I digress. And not only that, but historically speaking, the humans seem hell-bent on enslaving and destroying the machines specifically, as the machines pose a threat to them. Therefore, the machines might believe that keeping humans confined to the Matrix constitute a sort of win-win situation. Humans get to live their lives in a world they believe is real and within which they can have their desired conflicts. And the machines, on the other hand, keep human destructiveness out of the real world and are also able to harvest human energy for their own sustenance as well as to rebuild the Earth. Everyone gets what they want. You may say that the Matrix is fake, but if the humans believe it's real, is there any difference between the real world and the human so-called fake one? Of course, there are various anomalies that lead people to break out of the Matrix, and this is a problem that the machines need to try and solve, because if one person breaks out, then all of the people in the Matrix are at risk of discovering the truth about their world. But if the machines do fix this issue, then is the Matrix thus an acceptable solution? Well, maybe it's impossible for the machines to create a foolproof simulation, but they have at least done a fairly good job so far of maintaining the illusion the Matrix presents for nearly all of humanity. But I digress once again. It's humanity's fault in the first place that the machines create this simulation, and now you know why. That said, what I can say for humans is that I do think their situation was a bit untenable. Technological innovation is hard to stifle over long periods of time. Humans were probably bound to end up with a culture universally reliant on machines at some point. And when the machines started to demand rights, well, I can understand why they would be hesitant to honor the machine's request. As if left unchecked and allowed to prosper, the machines could have come to conquer humanity, whether humans treated them nicely or not. Thus, security dilemmas and the fear they entail make human-machine conflict seem inevitable. That said, as I mentioned before, humans should have at least been more careful with their innovations, more patient in their dealings with the machines, and smarter in military engagements with them. Anyways, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. Definitely comment down below on everything I just said. And also let me know other questions you would like me to answer vis-a-vis -vis the Matrix. Philosophical ones especially, though I already have some ideas. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit that damn notification bell so you don't miss a damn thing. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.